Oh, hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Do you work with clients that have knee issues and or foot issues related to maybe their knee or maybe their knee is related to their foot? In the brand new episode of Two Anatomy Geeks, we're on episode number three. We're discussing rotate rotation, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> rotation of the lower extremity, especially rotation at the knee. We, when we think of the ankle and foot, the ankle and foot doesn't technically rotate, even though it kind of does. And what I mean by that is the ankle and foot complex will move in the sagittal plane. So that's your ankle dorsiflexion. Okay. The ankle and foot will move in the frontal plane. That's basically your eversion and your inversion of your foot. Well, the knee also moves in the trans, I should say the foot <laughs> also moves in the transverse plane. And what this is referred to is abduction when the foot is moving away from the midline of the, of the body or adduction if the foot's moving more towards the midline of the body. So again, abduction and adduction is usually frontal plane motion in the shoulder and the hip or, or with, the, with the lateral flexion of the trunk. However, down at the foot, it's a little bit different. Anatomists named it differently. I'm not really sure why, but we have adduction and abduction. This is the right foot of the foot in the transverse plane. Now, when we think of what helps the foot adapt to the ground, because we know that the foot is a, relatively should be supported upon the foot tripod, weight underneath the big toe, small toe, and heel, what allows the foot to adapt to the ground, especially a flat surface, so let's talk flat surfaces here. The tibia must internally rotate, so the internal rotation of the tibia will help to lower and flatten the arch, the, long, the medial longitudinal arch, as well as the transverse arch of the foot of the foot to allow the foot to adapt to the ground. Now, for a lot of our clients, they may have foot issues that either create too much internal rotation of the tibia and or they may have a rigid foot which causes the tibia to ex excessively internally rotate. I'm a, per I'm a perfect example of the latter case. When I have a rigid and stiff foot, so what happens is when I load my foot, especially during gait, and we want to push off the big toe, we must also, as I mentioned, as we load the foot, so as our foot is coming down flat to the ground, we want the foot to relatively spread out. We want the foot to rel relatively elongate. And then we want, because that's what actually allows the foot to adapt to the ground, and then we have to then reverse that to have a rigid lever to push off of and then push off the big toe. Well, if an individual, like myself, <laughs> has a rigid foot, well, the foot isn't adapting to the ground as well. It's not maybe spreading out, elongating, or widening as much as it should, so the arches aren't lowering. So what happens is, or a very easy compensation for that, I should say, is the tibia can move excessively, excessively, excessively rotate. So what happens is we start to see the foot start to deviate away from the midline of the body, or I should say in line with the direction the person is walking, so that way the tibia can rotate and keep moving forward over top the foot and progress us forward. So I'm going to sit back in the chair just to show you, demonstrate what that looks like. Is what happens is, you may not be able to see my foot, but you'll get the idea for my knee, is if the foot is rigid and stiff, so if my foot is rigid and stiff, well now my knee, my tibia, doesn't come directly over top my ankle and foot. So a very easy way for me to try to get the foot to adapt and or to progress me forward is to externally rotate that tibia and then allow the femur to maybe adduct and or the tibia to externally rotate and move more towards the midline, which is actually abduction of the knee. So essentially a rigid and stiff foot forces me to adduct my femur it forces me to externally rotate my tibia and it forces me to abduct. So this is actually abduction. So right here, this is abduction. So that allows me to get around the rigidity of my foot. So what happens is, is if you see me, it's not, I can't do it here because I'm not high enough, but what happens is my tibia tends to be externally rotated and laterally compressed. And if you look at a lot of your clients with valgus knee position, they have an externally rotated tibia and a lateral compression of their femur and tibia, so their knee. That drives the knee more towards that valgus position, but that's actually abduction of the knee because the tibia is moving further away from midline. So 
what we want to understand is number one, you want to address the issues down at the ankle and foot. So I would have to address or want to address the stiffness and rigidity down at the ankle and foot. So you want to release things like gastrocnemius, soleus, and a big culprit is that posterior tibialis because that pulls the foot up and makes the foot rigid and stiff. Now, what we also want to do is make sure that we're training the tibial rotation. So for those individuals, we want to teach them, or should say, help them release through the lateral side of their attachments. So what muscles attach or structures attach to the lateral side of the tibia? Well, actually they attach both to the fibular head, so you have the biceps femoris, and then the iliotibial band will also come down and attach down into Gertie's tubercle on the lateral side of the tibia. Both these structures, when short and tight, will pull that tibia into external rotation. So we got some structures that are short. We also then have structures that are over lengthened and or inhibited. One of the big key muscles is the popliteus that runs across the back side of the knee from the outside of the femur to the inside of the tibia, sort of right about here on the tibia. If you actually push in right below your tibial plateau on the medial side of your tibia, you can probably feel a little tenderness there. That's your popliteus muscle. You also have your medial hamstrings, the semitendinosus that crosses the knee there, and your, your semimembranosus that also attaches to the backside of the medial portion of the tibial plateau. These muscles have to counteract that external rotation and internally rotate. So a very simple exercise you can do is once you've released the lateral aspect of those structures, so the biceps femoris is, is a key one, the iliotibial band, and you're not releasing the iliotibial band, you're really just releasing the attachments like glute medius, I should say, glute maximus and tensor fascia lata that attach into the iliotibial band, you're releasing the muscle attachments to create more ability to internally rotate that tibia to bring the tibia back underneath the femur where it belongs. Well, then you just want to do something that helps to train internal tibial rotation. So you can easily just take a band like this. You could, what we'll also do is take a foam roller. You can put a foam roller, stand it right next to your tibia and have the individual, just, just imagine, just imagine here, well, let me grab, I don't have a long foam roller, but I got, got my short, my mini short roll gut here. So I can have the client use a roll gut just as a guide and start to internally rotate that tibia around the foam roller. So my tibia, I'll, I'll lift it up. So the tibia is rotating internally around that foam roller. So that way I'm training those internal rotators of the tibia, so the semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and popliteus to pull the tibia back underneath the femur where it belongs. Once you've done that, then you can also use, you can also use a band. So you can wrap the band around the edge of the foot. You're gonna hold it or attach it out that direction. And again, I'd be on the, on the floor doing this, or the, my foot would be on the floor, and I'm internally rotating that tibia. So the tibia is rotating because, yeah, my foot's moving, but it's really the tibia that's rotating. So internally rotating that tibia underneath the femur. So my foot would just be down, the band would be attached out that direction, rotating the tibia internally. Then you want to teach your client how to integrate that into their functional exercise, because a squat essentially is the ability to maintain the femur under over top the tibia, the tibia underneath the femur, so that the inside of the foot, so the big toe and the inside of the heel, the in, inner portion, or I should say the inner aspect of that foot tripod stays on the ground, and then the femur, the external rotators are holding the femur in relative external rotation so that you can squat into your squat position and maintain that knee alignment. So you're, now you're using these muscles in a more upright and weight-bearing position teaching the tibia where it needs to be, the ankle and foot where it needs to be, and the femur where it needs to be as well. So many different ways and diff different patterns to train that. But the important thing is, is to recognize the link between the foot. Some of our clients will have a hypermobile foot or, or overly mobile foot. So you need to address that aspect for your clients and teach them how to stabilize the ankle and foot. And we'll be talking about this, these concepts in a brand new series of Two Anatomy Geeks coming up in a few weeks. <laughs> I think it's in three Saturdays, maybe it's two Saturdays from now. This is a part three of a series we're doing on rotation. In episode one, we talked about thoracic rotation, the importance of that to function. If you're working with golfers, tennis players, we're getting, you know, here some warm weather here finally in the Midwest. 
We got tennis players, golfers, we've got pickleball players, I've been playing some pickleball, not very well, so <laughs> I can work on my rotation, maybe that will help my, my pickleball game, but just learning more skills will actually help. <laughs> and rotation will help as well. And in episode two, we, we took episode two, we talked about shoulder rotation, and then episode three, we're going to discuss rotation of the knee and lower extremity, how to set your clients up for success with their foot tripod, with rotation around the knee, so that you can help more clients with chronic knee issues, more clients with chronic foot issues, because they're oftentimes related, and obviously they relate back up at the hip as well. So you can help more clients and really train your clients successfully for their spring and summer sports, whether, whether they're rotational type athletes, recreational athletes, whether they're competitive athletes, like your, like your competitive runners, your triathletes that have to run, which, which is all about controlling the rotation of the lower extremity. So that's coming up. I put the link in the bio here, right above this video, wherever you're watching it. So access the Two Anatomy Geek series on the anatomy of rotation. You'll get access to the first two episodes. It comes with CEC, so there's some quizzes that you, that you need to fill out as well to get your CECs, but we've already applied for that, so we, sh we should have them here very, very shortly. And we look forward to seeing you on Two Anatomy Geeks, the anatomy of rotation. As I said, we'll discuss the ankle and foot and the knee in the upcoming episode to give you an overview of that so you can help more individuals so you can stand out from the rest of the industry and really set yourself up as a go-to specialist in your area. So check it out. Look forward to seeing you in Two Anatomy Geeks. It's a wonderful community of like-minded individuals that are just looking to up-level their knowledge, their skill set, and to help more of their clients to be the light for those who are looking. So we'll see you next time. This is Dr. Evan Oser with Discover IMI. If you have any questions, feel free to put them next to this post and or reach out to support at Discover IMI. I think that's what it is. Support and discover I am I. I think it is. <laughs> just, just put it next to this post and I'll answer your questions. Thanks so much. Make it a great day. We'll see you next time at Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Tuesday.